This is my dream beach house that I bought for $843,000. And I'm gonna show you how I bought this little beach cutie for $50,000 out of pocket on today's episode of Raw Built. Let's talk about the actual financing you'd need to buy this house the conventional way. If you wanted to buy this house and use it as an Airbnb, you would likely have to put down roughly 20%, okay? Remember, I said the purchase price for this home was $843,000. 20% of that is about $168,000 as a down payment in a typical scenario. On top of that, I'd have at least $10,000 of closing costs. So that takes me up to $178,000. And on top of that, I'd have to actually furnish it and a place like this could easily cost me $20,000 bucks. So if you add that all up in an ordinary scenario, it would cost me roughly $200,000 to have that property up and running, ready to rock, fully furnished on Airbnb. So I know you're probably asking yourself, Rob, how the heck did you buy that house fully furnished for only $50,000 out of pocket? Well, it's a secret. Just kidding. You know, usually we try to shoot these videos at golden hour so that Papa's looking super crispy and beautiful and golden. And we're shooting this thing just right in the middle of the day at 2.30 in the crystal blue waters of Galveston, Texas. Crystal Beach, actually, but you know what I mean. Okay, let them pass, hold on. Like and subscribe! Those are fans, see, they're everywhere. That's so cool. Just kidding, they don't know me. Okay, so how did I buy this house for $50,000 out of pocket? Well, let me tell you, I use this amazing real estate strategy called creative finance. You may have heard me talk about this a couple of times on the channel here and there, and there's a couple of different variations of creative finance. The primary strategy that I used within creative finance was sub two, subject two. I did a collab with Pace Morby about this very topic a couple of months ago, so if you want a little bit more of a deep dive on that, go check out that video, or just go check out Pace. He's the king of all this stuff. But effectively what subject two means I am taking over the existing mortgage that once belonged to the seller of that property. And in doing so, I didn't have to actually go to the bank. I didn't have to pull my credit. I didn't have to pull my credentials, nothing. All I had to do to execute this purchase was go to a title company, fill out a bunch of paperwork. It's a lot more complicated than that. But effectively, it's a much more simple process than going through a lender and getting qualified for a mortgage. Now the thing is, the existing mortgage on this property was $678,000, meaning I took over that mortgage, but that there was $165,000 of existing equity on that home, which gets us to the purchase price of $843,000. So I took over the existing mortgage and with that equity that was left over, it's not like he just gave that to me. I still had to pay him out for that equity, but what we're doing with that equity is we're just financing it. Over 10 years, interest only, I think it's like two or 3%. I'm paying him a monthly payment of about $200 a month, which is very, very low. So the mortgage on this property comes out to about 5,700 bucks. I pay him 200 bucks. All in, I'm into this thing for about $6,000 every single month. Now, how did I pay $50,000 for this house? Well, he wanted a down payment of $25,000 so he could walk away with a little bit of cash. The deal was brought to me by a wholesaler and I think they made a 10 or $15,000 assignment fee for bringing me the deal. And then I paid like five or $10,000 in closing costs. I can't remember exactly the numbers for all of them because I don't have them pulled up, but all in I was in for $50,000 to buy literally a fully furnished house. The crazy thing is this is a new construction. Top to bottom, that home was completed in December of 2022. I bought it in January of 2023 and it was fully furnished. He hired an interior designer to deck it out, make it Airbnb ready. They bought everything from trash cans to hair dryers to board games to Tupperware. Literally, I didn't have to buy a single thing to listen on Airbnb, which is absolutely crazy. And I know the question that a lot of you are asking is, well, why the heck did he do this? I don't really know. And that's really the interesting thing about creative finance is that sometimes people get into these homes not really fully understanding A, the investment that goes into them, or the time or the self-management and they just want out or some life event happens that requires them to get cash very quickly or they just realize they don't have the time needed to successfully manage the investment that they got themselves into. I don't really know what the story was with this particular seller. We actually texted quite a bit during the transaction and after the transaction, we were on good terms. It was very amicable. We actually have a pretty decent relationship. When something pops up, he texts me. So I'm actually very grateful for that aspect and it's not always like that in these types of deals, but it just goes to show that whatever was happening in his life, he was okay with letting this house go. And I was able to help get him out of whatever situation he was in. He could walk away with some money now. And eventually on that $165,000 of equity that I owe him, that's gonna balloon. And I'm gonna be paying that out to him in one lump sum when that balance matures. So because there was a couple moving parts to this particular deal, it's not exactly just a subject to deal because 
I did assume the mortgage, which makes it a subject to deal, but I'm also financing the equity on a seller finance note. So that makes this deal a hybrid in the creative finance world. Usually if you wanted to find this kind of deal, whether it's subject to a hybrid, anything in the creative finance world, you're gonna be getting lists of owners with distressed properties. There are a lot of different tools and platforms you can use like batch leads or prop stream. And you're gonna be calling those owners and pitching them on this concept and working with them to help them get out of the homes if that's something that they want. This specific deal though actually came to me through Instagram. A wholesaler actually went out and did all that work, locked it up, and then sent me a DM and said, hey, do you wanna buy this deal? I've got a pretty good subject to deal on my hands. And I was like, yeah, I've always wanted a beach house and for 50,000 bucks, how could I say no? Let's head back to the beach house and I'm actually gonna show you the plans that I have for this property because remember, it's an Airbnb. And even though I bought it fully turnkey and ready to rock on Airbnb, still had to put the raw built touch on it. So let's go check it out. And now a quick break to announce HostCon 2.0. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited to announce this. I've been working on this. My team has been working on this round the clock to bring you my short-term rental conference, the second round of it. We did the last one back in January. It was completely sold out, standing room only. We didn't have enough food. There's so many people there networking, partnering, doing all that kind of stuff. I'm excited to announce that on October 29th and 30th in Houston, Texas, HostCon is going down. I'm gonna have speakers like Jesse Vasquez talking about midterm rentals. I'm gonna have Avery Carl talking about recession resistant vacation markets. Mark Simpson talking about building a direct booking business. Pace Morby will be there to teach you how to build a multi million dollar real estate portfolio for zero dollars through creative financing. I've got the most insane industry titans and speakers lined up for HostCon. And the best part of it is you're gonna have me on stage teaching you how to do this short term rental thing. So if you wanna be there and you wanna get in the room, with hundreds of other short-term rental operators, then head on over to hostcon.com or click the link in the description down below. We got early bird pricing going on right now, so it is the best time to snag your ticket to HostCon in Houston, Texas. All right, back to the video. Well, it is hot pockets. And uh, I think this is probably gonna be the sweatiest I've ever been in a YouTube video. Sweaty, very, very sweaty in every part of my body. I wanted to take a quick second to talk about the financials of this property. I've already told you the down payment, the purchase price, but as I mentioned, this is an Airbnb. And uh, I'm sure a lot of you are like, well, how much money are you gonna make on this, Rob? So before we jump into it, this is not gonna be my most rock star investment necessarily, because the reason I jumped on this opportunity was because I wanted a beach house for me and my family to enjoy whenever we wanted throughout the year. And so my goal when I bought this property was just to cover my bills and have a fun getaway to escape to whenever I wanted. All right, now let's get into the numbers. All in mortgage expenses for this property are gonna come in around 6,000 bucks. We'll say another $500 for utilities. And with what I've been averaging about another $1,000 per month for cleaning, that puts me about 7,500 bucks in expenses to keep this property afloat. 7,500 bucks times 12 means that I'm spending $90,000 a year to maintain this property. Now, when I ran this property on the AirDNA Rentalizer and I ran comps, I came to the conclusion that this property was probably gonna gross about $130,000 a year, making the profit for this property 40,000 bucks, you know, which walking into this, I was like, well, wow, not only am I gonna like cover expenses and have an amazing beach house, but I'm gonna make $40,000 a year. Great. Well, it hasn't really worked out exactly like that. I've actually been breaking even while I've owned this property. So really we're looking at around the $90,000 a year mark. And I was okay with breaking even, like I said, but then I got curious and I started looking at the properties on my street and the property directly next to mine is identical to mine, except that it's a different color. It's actually not quite as nice. The finish outs are pretty similar, but the furniture is not as nice as mine. And it's booked at like 100% and they're making way more money than this property is. And so I was gonna settle, but then when I saw a house that in my opinion, wasn't quite as nice, pretty close, but not quite as nice, making more money than me, it sort of got like my competitive spirit fired up. And so I've kind of made this big mindset change over the last couple of weeks to just really invest back into my portfolio. So that's exactly what I'm doing at this property right now. You see I'm all sweaty. It's because we've actually been building a mini golf course in the backyard. It's gonna be a six hole mini golf course. It's gonna cost me about $15,000, $20,000 to get up and running. But I think by adding that one amenity to this property, plus a ton of outdoor amenities and games in the garage area down below me, I think I'm gonna get to that $130,000 range. And if that ends up being true, then I'll possibly pull a $40,000 profit on this property. And remember, I put in $50,000. Plus, we'll call it another $20,000 to get the mini golf up and running. So if I make $40,000 a year on this property with an investment of $70,000 total, that puts my cash on cash return at 57%. I don't know if you can see this or not. 57%, which I think is pretty dang cool. Watching this back in the edit right now, realizing that I didn't give the full comp.
context of this property, but effectively I inherited the photos that came with it. I don't actually think they're very good. I think that's a big reason why I'm only breaking even on the property. It was also lacking a ton of amenities. All I had were board games. So as a consumer, I could see why it didn't do well compared to some of the other listings in the area. Hence the mini golf course. But I think once I do that and I had a bunch of amenities downstairs, which I've already done or am doing, I do think I'm gonna be pretty close to that 110 to 120 range. Possibility to go to 130 if my mini golf course really blows it out of proportion. I actually built that at the very end of peak season. So I'm not gonna really capture those results for about eight or so months. I'll keep everybody updated when I find out, when I have the year over year data and let you know if the mini golf course was worth it. But keep in mind, even if I didn't do the mini golf course and I just settled for the way that this property was and I put in $50,000 to get into it, then in order to receive that really amazing 20% cash on cash return, all I'd really need to make is a profit of $10,000 a year. That's what I really love about this deal is that I got into it with such little money down that really I don't need to make a ton of money to make a pretty outstanding return on this. Whether it's break even, 10,000 bucks, I'm still gonna be floored because I have an amazing brand new construction, six bedroom, three bath, beach house, fully furnished that I can come and visit every weekend. Last point I wanna make here though, is even if I did break even, there's actually the tax benefits of owning this as well because it is primarily a short-term rental that I self-manage Manage, meaning that I qualify for the short-term rental loophole. And if I run a cost segregation report on this, which I already have through my company, strcostseg.com, I'm actually getting $144,000 of accelerated depreciation, which comes out to about $53,280 that I'm gonna be saving in taxes because I own and self-manage this property. So not only did I put $50,000 into this property, I'm saving $53,280 in taxes. So in a really weird, wacky way, I kind of wrote off my down payment for this home. And regardless of if it breaks even or makes a profit, it's kind of a slam dunk for me because I'm getting all the money back through accelerated depreciation, meaning that I basically got this house for free. Hmm. You know, I never really thought about it until literally this moment, but that's pretty cool. I got this house basically for free. So if you're a short-term rental owner and you self-manage your property and you're not taking advantage of the short-term rental loophole, I have a video podcast that I currently release on this entire process. And if you want to get a cost segregation report done, then small plug for myself, go to strcostseg.com. You can enter in your address, put all your information in, and our website will actually calculate how much money you will save in taxes before you have to pay anything, which by the way, we're still accepting beta users in the Price is astonishingly very cheap for a cost segregation report. So if you wanna do that, head over to strcostag.com. So before we end the video, let's go check out the mini golf progress downstairs so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. Let's go. Remember that I said that this property was likely gonna break even as is? There are a few different things I could do to get to that $10,000 profit that I was talking about. However, I'm Rob Bilt and I really wanted to go all out. So I'm spending about $20,000 on the mini golf course that you're gonna see right now. And by doing that, I think we're gonna go from not just breaking even, but to profiting 30, 40,000 bucks. So check it out. So it's not actually done yet, but we are building a six hole mini golf course in the backyard of this property. About two days ago, it was just overgrown weeds. We've since come out, used a sod cutter to take everything out. We've leveled and graded the entire back lot and we've started assembling the forms that will house our different mini golf holes. And my favorite part about this is that you're gonna be able to play mini golf if you're a mom or dad and you're bringing your kids to my property. You're gonna be able to have this amazing experience, but you're also gonna be able to do it while looking at the ocean, the crystal, the crystal blue waters of Crystal Beach. Maybe with some uh, movie magic, can you, can you color grade this to be blue? But how cool is that? Mini golf with the view. It's almost like you're playing 18 holes of golf overlooking the ocean, except it's like kind of my really cool version of mini golf with weird things. So we actually have a whole video talking about this entire process. And if you want to watch that video, be sure to click right here and I will catch you on the next episode of Rob Bill.